Um, all right, so yes, there is uh, another item, um, and I believe it's number two on uh, your agenda. Okay, um, as is the condition of uh, application to, for state grants, we need to uh, submit a resolution that says that we understand what we're submitting and that we agree to abide by the contract that they should we receive the grant. Uh, we submitted such a thing, but we need to ratify it because we could not uh, ratify it in time for the application deadline. So I make that in the form of a motion to ratify resolution 2017-16. I'll second. second. All right, motion is made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of uh, uh, ratifying resolution 2017-16, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. Um, okay, so let's do a little skip back in the agenda. Uh, we'll go to uh, D, um, number one. This is a preliminary final reverse subdivision land development application for the CPS pharmacy. It's a lot of words to say, but essentially this is a approval, final approval of the plan for a new CVS that is being proposed on East Baltimore Avenue in between Radnor and Manchester Street. Everyone who lives in media knows that there already is a CVS here. Uh, it is sort of catty corner to the property that we are talking about here. The current property has nothing on it. It's an empty property. It's in between the Sunoco gas station and the Dunkin' Donuts, um, bounded by Baltimore on the north side and Franklin Street on the south side. Um, the, uh, the CVS, the present CVS, has, uh, uh, is kind of pinched for parking spaces. Um, it has roughly about 25 or so parking spaces, and probably off by a couple. And they would like to have additional parking spaces to service their customers. And that's really sort of the, the driver behind this. And as I understand it, the lease on the current CVS is up at the end of this year. So the idea was to basically flip the CVS from one side of the street to the other side of the street. Uh, this uh, application has been uh, before council for over a year now. It needed several variances, um, and it went before council as well as the zoning hearing board. The zoning hearing board approved the variances. So uh, now they are here for final approval of the development. Um, the, our role here is fairly constrained. Uh, we have a plan that, with a couple of exceptions, a requirement for some waivers, um, if we were to oppose it tonight, we would have to identify what portion of our ordinance or ordinances that this plan violates. Um, and, and if we're not able to do that, uh, then uh, oh, that, that, that's really our role. Um, so I'm, I'm here tonight uh, to make a, a uh, motion that we approve the preliminary and final reverse subdivision and land development application for this CDF, uh, subject to compliance with all of the conditions as set forth in the borough, uh, borough engineer's review letter, most recent review letter, as well as that of the borough's town planner, uh, Tom Kamita. Um, are there any other conditions, Mr. Matson, that uh, I am forgetting? You have them on. Pardon? Uh, no, Mr. President, I think you have them all. Uh, there are the matter of three waivers that are required for the application to move forward as it is. But on the whole, there are the hour letter, uh, the town planner's letter, and then there were uh, a number of terms and conditions that were um, that volley, I think, this afternoon as a part of the application. And the waivers that are being requested, two of them. Uh, Involve the placement of a sidewalk. Yeah, that's, uh, it's waiving the requirement that you have a planting strip between the curb and the sidewalk. And, and these, for purposes of putting the planting strip next to a retaining wall so that they can uh, have vegetation grow on the high retaining wall. And there also is a waiver with regard to preliminary uh, and and final. Requesting a, a combined preliminary final instead of two separate ones. My understanding is that the ship is sale on that one. Well, you, you, you did not have to accept it under those circumstances. Um, I, but I do want to point out, um, 
Mr. Madsen's office pointed out a few little revisions to the to the resolution. Um, they have typos, large, like I had the wrong date for one of the review letters. So I will make some corrections. Um, they're, they're not material, but uh, so the, the one on the table tonight, you don't need to sign. I'll have a new one tomorrow with those corrections on it. Is, is the applicant aware of those corrections? Uh, no, but they're immaterial. All right. Okay, so I make to the form of motion. This is approving the final plan for the for the CDS. Second. Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize. I, I forget. I always forget that we do that flipping of the of the of the, of the, of the, of the ballot. Motion for made and seconded with regards to the reverse subdivision preliminary final subdivision for the land development application. For the CBS at 306 East Baltimore Avenue. Any discussion regarding the motion? I will say something. Uh, I had not served on, on on our community development committee till recently, and I, I this is another one of these areas that I, I feel is just one member of council that think I was looking at the plan and seeing things being told that these were our only options, uh, meaning that these were council's only options. And once I sat with my first planning commission meeting, listened to the members of the planning commission address their concerns again, um, and I think it's important that for the record that we reference that our planning commission, who is simply an advisory board to council, voted to deny the application. Um, so I, I do feel that this is a project that I think will I know that we will end up moving forward with, but I'm also going to say I get concerned that as with our Wawa, it's going to be one of these projects that we're going to go, well, this is not what we anticipated, not what we expected. I do believe that there could have been areas that we could have, um, and I'll be candid, strong-armed CBS to try to reduce their parking so we didn't need a nine-foot wall. I started to look at renderings the other day, and something that I had never noticed until the other day when I started to look at it. There's no ever, there's, I have not, at least I did not see it, I could be wrong. Any rendering that actually showed the, 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 the variance of the Baltimore Avenue at, at, at Manchester and how, it, and how it drops down. So where we're seeing, the only thing I've looked at is, is conceptual drawings where you see Baltimore Avenue as a flat line. And that's not the case. You know, and I think it would have helped counsel people like me that aren't professionals to be able to have more of a visual that this is not a flat line with a nine foot wall on one side. This is a road that's going down and a nine foot wall. You know, it's going to, you know, it's going to be significantly more um, visual than the court diner one, which I didn't think the topography there was, was significantly different. I don't think we have a choice. I wish that CBS would sit there and say, we still want to work with the borough. I'm not sure if you have that desire, uh, but it's, it's disconcerting to me that we have a planning commission that, that is not happy with it. Um, I don't know really what the members of council are thinking, but we're, you know, we're somewhat stuck with it. Uh, but I, it frustrates me that, that one of the biggest pieces of property in media uh, in a year from now you know, may be one of these, whoa, that's not what we expected. Uh, but listening to the solicitor, listening to the chair of community development, and being a newbie on it, even though I'd served on planning for years, uh, I don't think we have much of, of a choice. But, unless you voluntarily want to sit back down and, and see what we could do to maybe uh, get that wall down, move some things around, and maybe recognize that, you know, I use your CVS, I am one of your loyal customers. Once or twice in my lifetime have I ever had difficulty parking. I firmly believe that, yes, you need additional parking, but I don't know if you need 50 spaces. You know, and we are a we are not the type of environment where people have to drive to the CVS. Everyone in this room talks about we're a walking community. Many of your patrons walk to the to the to the CVS. 
Um, and I just think that, you know, with taking away some of your parking, you could reduce some of your height or your wall uh, and probably make a lot of people, including members of the planning commission, a little bit more happy. But I think we're, we're our, our hands are tied. Would you not say, Chairman of the Planning Committee or Planning of the CDC? We don't have much choice, ladies and gentlemen, unless you volunteer to step up to the plate. So, motion is made seconded. All those in favor of passing the preliminary final reverse subdivision land development application for the CVS Pharmacy of 306 East Baltimore Avenue, please say aye. 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 Those aye. opposed? Ayes have it. Thank you, Thank you very much for being with us tonight. I know it's been a long journey for you. Um, just a couple of points because uh, I think they're, they're relevant. Uh, this plan was approved by the Delaware County Planning Commission, and there is a feature of this plan which I think will be well received by the members of the residents of the borough. I, I tend to agree with Paul. I think that uh, maybe there's a bit more you know, parking there than is needed, but that there will be a nice planted buffer at the back end of this property by Franklin Street. Um, and we've talked quite a bit about green space here. I think it's, it's, it's fair to consider that as green space for the borough as well. Um, so uh, we look forward to uh, seeing our current neighbors remain our neighbors, although in a different place. And it's my understanding we have to make this informed the motion. So this would be a motion for the CBS would be resolution 2017-19. So all those in favor of passing resolution 2017-19, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? You got it twice in five minutes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. We're going to stick with my portion of the agenda. I've got a few other action agenda action items. Item number two is uh, to ratify a resolution. This resolution it, it concerns a grant application. We're, we're looking to get approval to submit a grant to the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources in order to help pay uh, help us pay uh, for a garden that uh, we are looking to install on Veterans Square. Uh, this will be on um, Veterans Square, right where Veterans Square meets State Street. There's a, a Verizon substation there, and uh, on its east side, there's some of the widest sidewalks in all the borough. It's about 14 feet wide. Um, it's a, a an awful, awfully broad expanse of space. Uh, in a number of, of what's going on more than a year now, I think, um, we hired a consultant to design a, a garden that would include uh, stormwater features. It would help store stormwater runoff, uh, help reduce our stormwater, in, uh, stormwater uh, uh, imprint, um, and also provide some amenities for, for our residents. There will be tables there, uh, there will be uh, benches there, a little deck area, um, and uh, I think that, that, uh, that the images of that are now available on the Burma website. Um, so we would like to see whether or not there's any grant money out there to help us fund this, and tonight's motion is to help us towards that goal. So I move that we, regret, that we ratify Resolution 2017-15, which would enable us to submit grant applications to help pay for the Veterans Square Garden Project. Second. The motions are made and seconded. Any discussion with regards to the motion? All those in favor of ratifying Resolution 2017-15 for the submission of a grant application for Veterans Square Garden Project, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. Item number three. This is uh, an item to authorize our solicitor to draft and advertise a zoning amendment for um, medical marijuana dispensaries. Uh, those of you who have been paying attention to the news know that uh, earlier this month, legislation was passed in Pennsylvania that permits the uh, use of medical marijuana and also uh, enables a certain number of dispensaries to set up shop uh, throughout the Commonwealth, I think up to 150 dispensaries. Um, now, we as a borough, as a town, we cannot use zoning laws to keep a, 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 a business out of our, out, out, out of the all, borough. All so legal uses legal. have to be provided for right. some. Correct. So we have to find a place, because if we do not, then a dispensary can, it can be opened 
Um, pretty, pretty much anywhere permitted by the statute. Well, there are some limitations under the statute. Mr. Scott, you're itching to speak tonight. Yeah. How about, yeah. If your ordinance has does not provide for it, uh, you risk having no place wherever somebody wants by curative amendment. You can say your ordinance is invalid, therefore I get site-specific relief. I can put it wherever I want. Now, but there is state uh, prohibitions on um, a distance uh, it has to be at least a thousand feet from any public, private, or parochial school or nursery or daycare center. Correct. Right. Um, so, in order to avoid the situation where we are forced to react to an application, we're trying to get ahead of this. I uh, and uh, as I understand it, Mr. Scott. Essentially, because of those limitations uh, that uh, surround schools, daycares, etc., essentially, um, a dispensary would be permitted under our ordinances only in the in the, in the industrial area. Um, that's uh, south of Bolt Ramp and the West End, where the construction is going on. Um, so, in order for us to comply with uh, state law, and uh, in order for us to get ahead of this situation. I move tonight that we authorize our solicitor to draft and advertise an amendment to our zoning code uh, for medical marijuana dispensary. Second motion. Any discussion with regards to the motion? This is one of the times where it is an advantage to only be a three quarters of a square mile borough with lots of churches and daycares because there are other things that are only permitted in certain areas just because there's no room to put them because we're so small. With all those in favor of passing or authorizing our solicitor to draft and advertise a zoning amendment for the medical marijuana dispensary, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, ayes have it. Right. Item number four, uh, again, there's a lot of language here, and I'll explain what it means. It's re uh, seeking approval of a revised supplemental general reimbursement agreement with PennDOT uh, for the partial breach of the Third Street Dam. Um, all those words being said, this is really sort of a housekeeping matter. Uh, we have an agreement with the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation concerning the funding of the design and construction of the Third Street Dam. More recently, Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection uh, has taken steps to move forward with a partial breach of that dam in anticipation of uh, a, uh, a ultimate constru a reconstruction of the Third Street Dam. Um, so, with our agreement both with, with PennDOT, uh, it needs to be revised so that the, the, the money for the partial breach can be paid out of the PennDOT funds. So that's what this uh, what this uh, motion really does. It permits money to be paid from PennDOT to Pennsylvania <coughs> to help cover the cost of the partial breach of the dam. I make that in the form of motion. I'll second that. All those in favor of passing a revised supplemental general reimbursement agreement with PennDOT for the partial breach of the Third Street Dam, please say, oh, I'm sorry, any discussion with regards to the motion? All right. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. Last item that requires legislative, legislative action is the ratification of a letter in support for the Delaware County Planning Department's submission of a grant for trail program. Um, Delaware County has requested Media Borough to consider signing a letter in support of their plan uh, to enhance the trail network in the county. Uh, and they're seeking funding through the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. This letter, the idea, the idea behind this is that a letter from Media Borough and other affected municipalities could go a long way towards uh, getting that uh, granting those, those grant funds. Um, the grant is to prepare a feasibility study for a Media Smedley uh, connection trail. Um, this will help implement the county's open space, recreation, and greenway plan. This involves a connector trail that would provide basically an east-west connection to the countywide trail uh, system. And it would connect three parks, so Smedley Park, Glen Providence Park, and Mineral Hill. And uh, that uh, connector trail would go through five municipalities, of which Media Pearl is one. 
Um, the trail to me would essentially enter at the, uh, in, on the east side uh, at Providence Road and State Street, and on, uh, head up Providence Road to 3rd Street, and then cut all the way across to the other side of the borough uh, uh, to the 3rd Street Dam. And that's the proposed trail. Um, so I, I tend to think that this is a very good thing that we have these connector trails. Uh, it helps bring our communities together. It gives us uh, more places to walk safely and bike safely. Um, and the best thing is that uh, it isn't going to cost us anything. Uh, so uh, I make it a form of motion that we ratify signing a letter of support for the Delaware County Planning Department's submission of a grant for trail. Second. The motion. Is there any discussion with regards to the motion? All those in favor of ratifying the letter of support for the Delaware County Planning Commission planning department submission for a grant for the trail program, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Ayes have it. I might have misspoke. Uh, Jeff, Mr. Smith, item number six, that was my understanding, perhaps mistaken, that we don't need to take action on this tonight. Well, generally, Borough Council does accept uh, resignations from uh, various employees, so unless the solicitor disagrees, I would suggest Council take action. Let's do that then. Um, our current turnkey is one of the one of the folks who would help well with uh, persons who are brought to the borough lockup during off hours. Um, one of them, Charles Williamson, has tendered his resignation from that position. And uh, the motion here tonight is uh, whether to accept his resignation. I move that we accept his resignation. Second. Any discussion with regards to the motion? All those in favor of the resignation or accepting the resignation of attorney Charles Williamson from the media police department, please say aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed, ayes have it. I have one, well, actually, two announcements, both about the Media Arts Council. First, kudos to them for the film festival, which took place the uh, first weekend of this month, under the second, was the seventh and eighth. Um, anybody who's attended knows that over the years, the, the, uh, the film festival has increased. Not only in terms of size, but quality as well. There's a tremendous number of offerings this year, uh, and uh, oftentimes there were planes packed out. It was really a wonderful event. It takes an awful lot to put on a thing like this. And the Media Arts Council, they do this on a volunteer basis, and they do a wonderful job. So congratulations to them. We appreciate your efforts. Uh, the other uh, item uh, for announcement is a reminder that uh, the uh, Philadelphia Museum of Art Inside Out program is revisiting Media Borough, and they should start placing reproductions of various artworks throughout Media Borough beginning sometime next month. So be on the lookout for that. That completes my report. Anything for the council president? Hearing none, the hammer's back to you. Thank you. Um, let's move to uh, the, the top of our agenda, and uh, uh, Councilman Boyer with Recreation and Board of Health. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, based on the gravity of everything that's happened so far, this is kind of a little respite. Um, per se. Um, a few announcements from uh, REC. Um, we had a very successful Easter egg hunt this past Saturday. Um, some figures of something like 12,000 eggs were... <laughs> I'm going to say hidden, but that pretty much means scattered over the grass around the top lot, but they were, were all found. Um, 500 hot dogs were consumed. And I want to really commend the uh, members of the Rec Commission, uh, President Donald Trustee, and then uh, Wendy Allen, who brought in a contingent of youth from Springton Lake to help out. And everything went off fairly well. And as usual, it was a success, and it makes the borough look really great to be able to put on a program like that. So I commend them. It's a lot of work. It's a, a lot of people, but everything went off very smoothly. So thanks to the, the rec board for doing their, uh, doing their important job. Um, the playroom, the uh, community playroom up on the third floor of the Borough Hall, there will be new carpet. I think that's long overdue. I think it's about 10 years since the carpet's been replaced, so uh, we are going to go ahead and do that. The first uh, movie night of the season will be Friday, June 9th. This corresponds with the end of the uh, school picnic would be the elementary school. They usually coordinate that. The other ones are generally on Saturdays, but this will be Friday, Friday night, June the 9th, and the movie is to be uh, announced. They haven't decided on the uh, movie yet. Um, the rec board will be sponsoring a, um, will be going to the Union, uh, Philadelphia Union game on Saturday, August the 12th, and the tickets are for sale, at, will be for sale at $20. You can contact Paul at the rec board to, uh, to purchase a ticket. Uh, and Paula has put together a survey. We've been talking about expanding the top lot and putting in some equipment appropriate for kids maybe in the 
four to five uh, age range, and the survey's been out there. We're compiling the data from that, and we'll look forward to working with properties and finance in the future to hopefully expand the top lot, so stay tuned for that. And that concludes the report. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Council Board? Yes. yes. What date is the union again? Uh, Saturday, August the 12th. Thank you. They're going to win one. <laughs> Maybe they'll have a win by then, right? All right. Go good. Um, okay. Uh, let's move on to Harvard, the eight historic. Councilman Lisa Johnson. Thank you. Um, I have no report for HARP or um, the Historical Society, but, um, well, sorry, let me, let me address the uh, one motion that you made. Okay. We have one thing to do is accept the resignation of Julie Powell from the Historical Architectural Review Board. Um, she, she, she recently um, came on board, but found out she has other commitments she needs to attend to, so she's she, um, resigning from HARP. Second. Motion is made and second. Any discussion on the motion? There is no call for discussion. All those who uh, uh, favor resignation, not favor, but all of those uh, who uh, uh, say yes. accept the resignation of Julie Powell from the Historic Architectural Review Board uh, for a term that expires at the end of uh, 2019, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. We're sorry to see her go. Okay, um, and uh, so I have no reports for the HARP or the Historic Society. Um, MBA wants me to announce that um, they'd like to thank the residents and visitors who came out and attended and supported the 15th annual Roots Ramble. Um, they said it was a huge success. And the Blues Stroll will be on Saturday, June 10th. Um, they also want me to announce that uh, local business businesses volunteer their time each month to attend the Business Preservation Committee meetings on the first Tuesday of each month at 9 a.m. in the second floor meeting room in the Borough Hall. And everyone is welcome to attend. Um, the mayor uh, gave us an update on Super Sunday, oh no, sorry, on uh, the Clydesdales, that they're, it's, it's going to be held on May 28th, which is a Sunday at noon. And I just found out tonight that Super Sunday scheduled for this Sunday has been postponed because of the weather they're predicting, and they're going to use their rain date for the following Sunday on the 30th. That's all I have. Thank you. Are there any questions for Councilman Lisa Johnson? Hearing none, we'll move along to properties, public work, and fire. Vice President Robinson. Let's get this thing moving. Uh, first, I would need to, as we discussed earlier, we discussed that the borough was kind enough to give a donation of $25,000 to the fire company. We do need to ratify that motion. So I'd like to, like to make a motion that we ratify the donation of $25,000 that we gave to the media fire book and ladder number one. Second. Motion. So motion is made. Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of ratifying the uh, donation from Media Borough to the Media Fire Company in the amount of $25,000 in recognition of their 125th anniversary of service to the borough, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. Agenda items. Um, first, I'd like to sit there, and we are talking about doing, building a Sally Port. For those that may not know, it's a place in which our police cars are pull into it be a secure facility so that when we would take prisoners out of the car we would be taking them out in, in our parking lot it's something that we talked about when we originally built this facility um, did not have the funds fast forward 20 years and we're building our sally court so i make a motion that we authorize the advertisement for bids for our sally court for the media police station is there a second there is a second vote. any discussion on the Hearing none, all those in favor of, of uh, going, going out for advertisement for bids for a Sally Board at the Media Police Station, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? The motion passes. And second is to award the bids for the 2017 Road Resurfacing Program. I do not have them in my folder, but if Mr. Kevin would be kind enough to give me the low bid. Mr. Kevin, you are up. Certainly, Mr. Vice President. Uh, and low bid is Incon Services uh, with a low bid price of $126,854.70. And that's Incon 
bid opening was April 6th, $126,000. $126,854.70. 17? 17. 17. Got it. Got it. Thank you. And I will put that in the form of a motion. Second. All right. Any discussion on the motion? Just one thing. What's the window in which they start and when, when they should finish by? Uh, we, I think we put a cap at uh, the August 26th, but they, we can you know, make sure we facilitate around the five miler so that we don't have any equipment or things along those lines. So we'll work with them as much as possible. So I think we got the, the bid relatively early this year as opposed to last year, so which should be a good shape. Just, okay. Kevin, um, do, do we know exactly what's going to get repaid? Decide which roads are going to be yes, there were six, as we were here back in March, there were six that were determined to be the highest priority. I met with Ralph the, and the road crew, brought to the council's attention, and there are six. I have, I have those if you, would, if you would like them. Yeah, do you have them with you now? I do. Yeah, I, have I, can, to, I have to pull them up one second. Yes. Well, I can, I can see it after me. Okay, so. All right, any further call for discussion? Hearing none. I'll call the question. All those in favor of awarding the bid for the 2017 Roads Resurfacing Pro Program to I in income 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 in the in in amount of $126,854.70. Please say aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. aye. Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. Thank you, Kevin. Kevin. I'm sorry, Kevin. I'm going to have to ask you with regards to the inlet repair. I know that there was it's a collapsed inlet at Front and Olive Streets. I know we went out the bid. I know we got a low bidder. We've used the bidder before, uh, but I don't have the details in front of me. I do apologize. Certainly, consistent with the stormwater management master plan that was uh, adopted earlier this year, these inlets were targeted to be repaired. They're just not in great shape, so they, the urgency has been pushed up. They were found to be in an almost um, a treacherous condition out in the field. So we met with Ralph and uh, Terry Gallagher of our office is out there to take a look at them. And uh, we recommend that the um, we recommend that we did get three phone bids, which is the process for, for this particular window of work, be awarded to Cipollone contractors. Bid price is fifteen thousand eight hundred and seventy dollars. Make a motion we award the bid to Cipollone in the dollar amount of fifteen thousand eight hundred and seventy dollars as referenced by our engineer. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of uh, awarding the contract to repair the inlets at Front and Hollow Street to Cipollone for $15,870, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. And uh, I did want to also reference our police report. I'm not going to get into the, the whole thing about our chief our fire report from our, from our chief. For the month of March, we had 24 fires, 7 in the borough, 17 mutual aid. We had 175. EMS runs. And Brian was kind enough to just hand me a note from Aqua that on Monday, April 24th through Friday, May 5th from 9 a.m. to p.m., there will be lane restrictions scheduled on Baltimore Avenue slash Baltimore Pike between Edgemont Street and Radnor Street in Nether Providence. And Edgemont Street and Radnor Street in Nether Providence. And Upper Providence Township and Media Borough, April 24th through Friday, May 5th from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Lane restrictions are scheduled on Manchester Avenue between Radnor Streets and Wallingford Avenue in Nether Providence, Upper Providence Townships, and Media Borough. There will be flagmen designating what lanes and how to get through them. Just a little FYI. That concludes my report. All right. Thank you very much. Does anyone have any questions for Vice President Robinson? Thank you. Hearing no call for questions, thank you very much. Uh, we'll move on to, uh, uh, we'll move back to Councilman Williamson for his report on finance, public safety, and life. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll start with a few library announcements. First, um, I'm happy to announce that the library has uh, selected a new library director. Her name is Sandra Ginelli. She's most recently at, uh, was the director of Lansdowne Public Library, the uh, Media Upper Province Library, is very happy to welcome her. She's a well-experienced li librarian, and I'm sure, I do hope you'll come out and meet her. She starts on May 1st. Second thing is starting uh, Friday, uh, Saturday morning, is uh, 
the media book sale in its new location. It's going to be in the basement of the new library. So all of you, if just I'm curious to see how it's going to work. But I'm sure it's going to be a smash success like it always has been. And it will be open on uh, Friday, uh, Saturday and Sunday. And, and Monday as well. I don't think there's still time to, uh, to uh, pledge $100 so you can go to the preview sale tomorrow night. But if you're really keen to look, look on the website and see if you still have time if you haven't paid that $100. That would be from 6 to 8 tomorrow. And you get to get free, uh, I get to purchase up to 10 books if you, if you go there. The library is soliciting uh, new board members, and if you're interested, please contact the library. Last thing is, the library received a $1,000 grant from the, um, a, a garden society, the Providence Garden Club, toward landscaping of the library, so well done. Okay, next would be ratification of payment of the bills. This, year's, this month was a heavy uh, month. From the general fund, we uh, withdrew $616,018.88. From the recreation fund, $10,287.37. And from the capital fund, $82,692.20. I move ratification of payment of bills. Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those who favor payment of the borough's bills for the March 2017 from the general recreation and capital funds as outlined by Councilman Williamson, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, say nay. The motion passes. The next item, we've already done two and three. Those were matters of a piece of real estate at 5th and Broomall Street. Uh, so the next is resolution 2017-17, which would be at, for the media borough to adopt Delaware County's 2016 hazard mitigation plan as its own plan. Uh, the public safety professionals in the borough have reviewed the plan and found it to be relevant and acceptable to them and, and, and wish us to pass this resolution. So I make that motion. Second. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor of adopting resolution 2017-17 with regard to adopting the hazard mitigation plan for media borough, please say aye. Yes. Aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. And the next resolution is for updating our um, PSAB slash MRT database, which will have the net effect of allowing Jeff Smith to be the borough's chief administrative officer for signing all documents related to our pension plans. I make that in the form of a Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving resolution 2017-18 uh, with regard to updating the PSAB MRT database, please say aye. Aye. Yes. aye. Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. Item six is, again, you might recognize this name, the resignation of Julie Powell, who was an active citizen uh, volunteer from the Cap uh, Capital Improvements Task Force for the same reasons. She just got too busy, couldn't do it anymore. So I move that we accept her resignation with regret. Sorry, sorry. there is a second on the motion. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor of accepting the resignation of Julie Powell from the, uh, the, uh, the Capital Improvement Plan Task Force, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. Item seven is uh, a, the, uh, it's, uh, 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 our former auditor decided that Media Bureau was too complicated for his small business and asked that we please uh, ask him not to continue. So we, have, we accept bids for a new uh, uh, auditor. We received one uh, competitive bid. That, that auditor now has had the opportunity to review our books carefully. And while the initial bid was well beneath um, our approved budget line item for the audit, it turns out the auditor has decided that perhaps they need a little bit more. So uh, for, for what myself and the borough manager have concluded are very good and sound reasons, uh, this was reviewed by the Finance Committee, and I'm going to make a motion this evening that we uh, approve an engagement with Barbicane Auditing Services for up to $25,000, which would be the uh, borough's uh, uh, budgeted line for that expense for this year. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Uh, yes. I, um, I called the auditor today and asked ask some questions around this because it is unusual to um, have the new auditor uh, change change the price in the, in the stream. So I asked them what, what the reasons were 
and uh, we discussed it, and um, they seemed sound, reasonable, and he also confirmed that this is a one-time cost only, and that we won't get charged this for a base of this next year, plus a typical three to five percent increase, so that won't happen. So um, I feel confident that this is um, money well spent by the uh, borough. Any further question or discussion? Uh, now you said up to twenty-five thousand. Correct. No more than not to exceed. Okay. Uh, one follow-up question: All those in favor of improving the additional services engagement letter uh, with Barbicane uh, with uh, the payment of up to twenty-five thousand dollars for their services, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. The next item is one that I think came across a number of our inboxes uh, within the past couple of weeks. And as we all know, there's a, a number of proposals in Washington, D.C. To, to cut a variety of, of federal programs. Um, and certainly many of them might be of interest to the borough, but one that for which we have received uh, tangible benefits over the years is the Community Development Block Grant Program. So uh, we were sent a template letter by the uh, Association of Boroughs in Pennsylvania asking for our support to write a letter to our congressional legislation urging them to continue funding for a community development block grant program. We get uh, funds to, oh, Mr. Smith, please help us with some recent ones that we've gotten. Sure, uh, to do the borough's uh, comprehensive plan, uh, also some sidewalk where it did not exist over on um, Jefferson Street, some other example. Thank you. So I, I uh, make a motion that uh, we ask the, the borough manager to draft that letter uh, for our review and approval at the next workshop meeting for, so that we can send it to the... We're actually asking if you can send it off. I think tomorrow is actually... Oh, really? <laughs> okay, well then... Yeah, then it's just then, a template. Uh, Karen uh, Tosic Lux had put together a draft. Kind of just, okay. All she did was took the template and referenced the two most recent projects as examples that you know worked for the borough so if you're okay with it to comply with the, t the deadline we'll submit it tomorrow as long as the council president's willing to sign off on it. I'm okay with it but I'm going to open that up to discussion for the rest of the council. Oh good. Motion made. It's been I take that I'm good to be the second. Why second? No, I thought it was already second but that would be opening back up. All right. Yeah. Uh, any further discussion? I'll call the question. All those in favor of uh, of uh, supporting preservation of CDBD, CDBT funds. Right. And approving the, the, the right. borough manager to draft and send that letter of support, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. Okay, oh. Peter, see how fast you can make mass gatherings. Yeah, we have a bunch of mass gathering permits to approve. Now, I must say, just so it says that we've reviewed all of them, the public safety has reviewed them all, and have had no problems. I only have one change, and I will mention that as we go. Okay, for the first one, we're ratifying a mass gathering that already occurred during Holy Week, and that is for the Second, second Baptist Church reenactment of Christ going to the cross, which occurred last Friday, April 14th. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of ratifying the mass gathering permit application of the Second Baptist Church, uh, the reenactment of Christ going to the cross, uh, which has already occurred, please say aye. Yes. Aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The next one is a mass gathering permit uh, mentioned already tonight about uh, a Clydesdale parade on May 28th. The only change from our agenda is instead of starting at 1, it's scheduled to start at noon instead, and that's per the sponsor and the chief of police. You'll be flying that though around that. Um, the oh, permit was yeah. changed from 1 to noon. So yeah. if it's 11, they started <laughs> when are we shutting down the streets? Uh, before 12. This says. It says set up time request 11. Yes, sir. It says 11. Okay. I guess the start time changed from 1 to noon. <laughs> so I'm going with what I was told, and that's the only change is the start time has changed from 1 to noon. All right. Is there, there a second? Is there a second? There is. Any discussion on the motion? All right, all those in favor of approving the mass gathering permit application for the immediate business authorities Memorial Day Clydesdale Parade. Uh, please say aye. Yes. Aye. aye. Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. 
Okay, the next I have no comments for. The first one is the Media Business Authority's 10th Annual Media Downtown Core Show on July 16th from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the mass gathering permit application for the Media Business Authority's 10th Annual Media Downtown Car Show, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. Okay, the next is Town Talks Fall Super Sunday on September 10th from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. with rain date of September 17th. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, and here we are on the eve of the uh, Spring Super Sunday. No, it's a Change the oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, I apologize. Right because of the weather. Okay, so let's talk about the fall Super Sunday. Uh, all those in favor of uh, granting the mascot permit application for the Town Talks Fall Super Sunday, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. The next is for Media Business Authority's 37th Annual Food and Craft Festival on Sunday, October 1st from 6.30 a.m. to 6.30 p.m. with a rain date of October 8th. Second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the Mascotting Permit application for the Media Business Authority's 37th Annual Food and Craft Festival, please say aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. Uh, Town Talk Newspapers Media Halloween Parade on October 28th from noon to 4 with a rain date of October 29th. Second. Any discussion? Hearing on all those in favor of approving the mass gathering permit application of the Town Talk Newspaper's Media Halloween Parade, please say aye. Uh, yes. aye. Aye. Those opposed, please say nay. The motion passes. Close. Closing out the annual <laughs> uh, season festivals is the Christmas Parade slash Fun Run Walk on Sunday, November 26, 2017 from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. Second. Second. We got two seconds. Um, any discussion? I am a little bit surprised that we're not talking about a ball drop tonight, but can't have everything. Yeah. Well, we got to add a Thanksgiving Day parade too, because it's just not complete. You're right. Yeah. Um, all those in favor of approving the mass gathering permit application for the Christmas parade and fun run walk, uh, please say aye. Yes. Aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. That concludes my report. Any questions for Councilman Williamson? Hearing none, Fair Trade Shade Tree, Environmental Advisory Council, and Farmers Market, which is a little bit on hiatus. Councilwoman Amy Johnson. Thanks. Um, all right, starting with shade tree, um, just a fun fact. I know that um, it might seem that a lot of trees come down in our borough, but just for everybody to know, an equal amount goes up. And then for the year 2017, we will be planting 65 trees throughout the borough, um, uh, an array of, of, of different varieties of trees. Um, so, um, just a reminder um, to all the residents out there, if you do have um, a street tree that looks to be, that needs tending to, or branches are falling, or it looks to be dying and needs um, some TLC, you can contact the barrel and Jeff will um, alert the Shade Tree Committee and Ralph. Um, and if the tree does need to be removed, it most always gets replaced, and as a resident, you also have a say in what tree you would like to um, see replaced, um, as long as it's, it's within the appropriate list of trees. So you can be a part of um, the shade tree movement of media um, and what trees you want to see plant, planted. Um, let's see. Um, under um, let's see under um, EAC. Um, I just wanted to remind everybody that um, there was a recommendation made by one of the members of a borough committee fair, um, and the council, Vice President Councilman um, Robinson and I um, came up with the date of October 7th. So Jeff, can you look into that date and just make sure there isn't anything else happening? But um, we just kind of picked a date. We're thinking of an outdoor event, if the weather permits, um, maybe in the borough parking lot, and kind of involving other um, things that are family friendly along with the fair. So stay tuned for that um, as we work towards what will be happening on that date. But October 7th. Um, as far as uh, the Media Farmers Market, 
Um, yes, we the farmers market is unfortunately on hiatus this season. However, we are working. The committee and myself are working with a organization called City Harvest, um, which is an organization that helps revive and start up um, farmers markets within uh, the Philadelphia area. Um, so we're looking at a new location, poss possibly a new day, um, and in hopes for a stronger um, and um, yeah, a, a kind of a, this is a, a year of, um, that we need to kind of revisit things, especially the, like you said, we had some issues with the um, spot and also the day. We need to accommodate, you know, the vendors. Um, we weren't having a lot of shoppers coming out as we normally did, and we really attribute that to the thinking of the day of the week. So we're looking at a Saturday, and we're excited about the possibility of that for 2018. Um, under EAC um, and um, Fair Trade, there is a green procurement plan that's being worked on. Um, that's a joint effort between Fair Trade and EAC, and also working a little bit with Karen Tausick Locks um, on involving thorough procurement uh, in an effort to buy greener. We're looking at everything from vehicles to pesticides to copy paper. So that plan, um, we'll pro I'll probably have more to uh, report on that at the May workshop. Um, what else? Is that it? Do you have, do you, do you have a question, Mr. Robinson? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 10 of 11. I think they hit everything. Yeah, that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions for Mr. Robinson? Yes, yeah, I just would say that you know the Roche Media School District has but the majority of their fleet now is natural gas. So that is something that we could probably look into and, and work a deal out with the school district to use their natural gas facilities. Tell me my yeah. Sorry. Roche Media School District has a fleet of natural gas buses now. Mm -hmm. We could probably discuss something to work with the school district to to use their refueling station. And it would be something that might be applicable for a highway truck. I don't think they're fast enough yet for police vehicles, uh, but like a highway truck or something that we might be able to take a look at. They use them for all the all the flat nose buses that you see with Roche Media. They're, they're natural gas. So great. Thank you. Use our tax dollars wisely with the school district. Mm -hmm. Amy, I have one shade tree related request. Yeah. That uh, when they're thinking about where to plant those 65 trees this year. That well, we have places for all of them, but if you want to wait till next year, go ahead. South yes. side of the 100 block of East 2nd Street. So in between Kenchmont Street and Monroe. Um, and uh, there are very few street trees on the mm. south side. Oh, yeah. That's right. Very thick Great. Um, all right, so uh, let's move along to uh, Councilman Sarah Dixon, Public Relations and Historical Archives. Well, let's see. Um, oh. um, one of the things that the archives are excited about is the um, Sarah Smith Cooper family, um, Admiral Thomas Cooper's family. She'll be in town in a couple of weeks, ago well, in May, and bringing material for, because um, we were trying to get it together with her. And um, it Could you let happen. me know when she comes? Will I be there? Could you let me know when oh, she course. comes? Okay. Yes. I live in his house. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that's one of the most important things that's going on right now with the um, uh, archives. And this, we've received an awful lot of print press recently, and, uh, and so I'm sure that all of you caught it, but this is so different that I needed to share it. Um, so I'm leaving church on Sunday when someone from New York City who's visiting with his mom tells me that the Victorian society is coming to media. I say, who's the Victorian society? The Metropolitan Chapter of the Victorian Society in America. 
from Manhattan. It's coming to media because media retains numerous architectural treasures from the Victorian area. They'll do a walking tour through State Street's historic district and Regal Row. And we will stop and tour the Institute of Science building that dates back from 1867. We will visit a Victorian home dating from the 1860s and the Media Presbyterian Church completed in 1855. Dr. Samuel Lemon will give a talk on the Campbell AME Church that, um, and with his Quaker African American history of media from the Civil War and the early 1920s. Um, lunch, we're going to have lunch at uh, Lotus Farm table, farm, farm to table, and residents probably call media everybody's hometown. This is much more than a slogan. slogan. It describes a real state of mind. That's my nice. report. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, anyone have any questions for Councilman Dixon? <clears throat> Hearing none, we invite the public. If, uh, okay, can I make one more Yes. Um, I mentioned that turnkey Chad Williamson attended his resignation, and uh, the chief wanted to have a recommendation that I forgot to ask for a vote on. Uh, the chief would like to recommend that the uh, uh, that <clears throat> he be replaced by a re recently retired detective from Chester City Police Department named Charles Boswell. He's a resident of Wallingford and made an application for this position, turnkey after retiring from police work in 2016. So we do need a vote for that? Yeah. I make a motion we table it. I think it needs to go through personnel committee as any hires. So for turnkeys? Well, I think yeah, there needs to be a motion first before we have a motion to the table. So <laughs> I don't know that anyone it's getting made late. a motion. Yeah. Uh, is anyone uh, prepared to make that motion? I, I don't so move. Is there a second on the motion? Somebody needs a second. Always. Okay. No one second. No one second. I don't know how we've done that. I forget. It's been a long while since we hired Turkey, but I don't remember how. Uh, I thought the you know, recommendation is fine, but we do go through the first one. Any employees go through the process. Doesn't okay. matter if they're it's police. Doesn't matter if they're police. Okay. All right. Fine. I'm fine. I just. But you can't do anything until somebody seconds. Right. We can't. There hasn't been one. So uh, I'll make a motion to table the uh, the legislative agenda. Um, uh, but we do have public comment for the floor. Do we have any stalwarts out there who are still with us who wish to address council? If so, the microphone is yours. There are no takers. Motion to adjourn. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. You're adjourned. Good night, folks.